Hello, Reddit user NickyBoy909. I'm about to take your replay and cast it for you. I'm hoping you're going to enjoy the cast that I have. Unfortunately, I don't have the best top-notch sound quality, but of course, I had to use a basically a mechanism on my sound card that drowns out all the background noise that um, really doesn't, what's the word I'm looking for, really doesn't contribute to a quality cast. Otherwise, you would hear basically the buzzing of my fan, and I'd like to just apologize and say, sorry, I don't have a studio-grade casting for you. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and dive into your replay, and I'm going to do my best to give you the best quality cast I can. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, in the lower right-hand corner spawning as our Red Zerg. I give you all Nicky Boy, the uploader of our replay. And in the upper left-hand corner, his opponent in the blue trunks, Pepper, Pepperinic. Pepperinic? From now on, I'll just call him Paper. I hope he doesn't mind, but... um. The map we are on today is going to be Belshire Vestige. Of course, if we're going to talk about it in the context of PvZ, I say this very mechanically. This is something I go through at, in the beginning of every game, but there is a very wide open natural. Uh, this doesn't really work against Protoss per se, as you can already see our Lutoss going for uh, a Forge Fast Expand Opener, or at least a, you know, a Nexus first, more or less. For now, I'm willing to say it's going to be Borderline Nexus Forge Fast Expand. We can all tell that much just from looking at this. Expo first. But, of course, for ZVP, this can be a little, just a teeny bit uh, to the detriment of a Zerg player because we usually don't have this walled off for uh, maybe the first seven minutes of the game. It all depends on creep spread, how many queens a player has, and so on and so forth. But here we go. Paper comes to the main, or excuse me, the natural. He sees that there is no hatchery down just yet, and he's going to go ahead and try picking away at the main, see what's going on here. But he already saw a drone going out. The question is, did he actually catch that with his eyes? His his, his probe spotted it. It's just that, you know, the question, again, is whether or not the player himself was paying attention to this. Well, for now, it looks like he kind of misclicked there, but he's going to go ahead and throw it on that natural hatch. Meanwhile, back at home, we actually don't have a forge for paper, so we're not going to see any, any uh, what's we're looking for, any can cannon stuff going down anytime soon. It might, I, I want to say, probably kick in towards the finishing of this hatchery, but we're still waiting to see that spawning pool go down for Nikki Boy. I, I would definitely say that it is still on the table, even though we don't see paper actually throwing down a forge, but he goes, he's going Nexus for this. Okay, so both players kind of playing this out a teeny bit honest. Um, trying to keep each other as honest as possible by worker scouting each other, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Hatchery in the main. Paper in it. Paper just says, oh, come on. Out, please. Elmo. Elmao. Says such a retard. Like, I really don't understand what this is all about. Nuh uh. But he did basically abuse that because uh, his opponent didn't have a pylon in place over here. And he actually doesn't... He's, he's getting one now. But he didn't have a forge down for the longest time either. So now I'm learning something new just a little bit. Something that might be viable in the context of ZVP. He says, out of the game, you don't deserve to live. But what do we have behind this? I think we actually have just Nicky Boy playing his opponent's uh, card, really. Like, if we see what Paper is, like, what, what he, if Paper would simply send a scout out, what he could definitely see here is uh, the third hatch going down. I really think there's no huge overcommitment here by any means, but what we could see eventually is maybe a queen get put on creep and then start spreading creep tumors, but that's a, even that's a long shot. I think both of these cannons might be able to take down the hatchery before the creep is actually out of range, like, before, the, before, the, before we can actually see a creep tumor go down. The question is, what are we going to see from Nicky Boy here? He's already forced his opponent to expend two cannons and a pylon on this. That brings its total value to about 400 minerals. But at the same time, it also forces Paper to keep a close eye on his main. But we see nothing coming out of this just yet. Is there a hatchery? No, no, I'm sorry. We have a spawning pool now. So what are we going to see here? No queen in the mix. Possibly six lings will be made, but I, even that I'm doubtful of. Like, honestly, I, I don't see quite what Nicky Boy is trying to do here yet. Aside from maybe just, you know, wasting a little bit of his opponent's macro time, that's it. Even these larvae won't be able to finish before, uh, before the cannons get them killed, if you will. Pardon me if my casting sounds a little off shot right now. I actually donated plasma earlier today. We're talking white blood cells, so 
yeah. Um, a little lightheaded. I wouldn't say doozy by any means. Definitely not doozy. But um, it kind of it sets off my, my ability to think just a little bit. So, double assimilator is going down at the natural at about six minute mark. Actually, these went down about 23 seconds ago. That puts it around six minutes. So what we could see with this is, I was going to say Stargate, but you know, also the potential for Twilight Council play, Bleak Stalker plus two timings, that kind of thing. Overall, I want to say that the condition we see our Protoss in is not too bad considering he had to basically expend uh, 400 minerals to get rid of something that only costed 300 and there was nothing committed to that afterwards. But behind this we see the probe over here just chilling, waiting for its opportunity to pounce, if you will. Oh, but wait a minute. Nikki Boy can see that, he just hasn't taken care of it yet. I prefer to use Lings to do that, but I guess the Queen would suffice. And Rotorn and Evolution Chamber going down right now. I actually don't really like the style in ZVP. I prefer to do the Leenok, um Ling Ultra timing, Ling Queen Ultra Investor timing, if you will. But of course, that's very dangerous versus what we see from paper because, well, actually, it would actually be super effective versus what we have from paper right now. Um, because really, you know, there's no efficient, there's no, there's no way that we can see Phoenixes deal with Ultras or Lings. They're basically useless. They're paper weights. Sure, they can use their graviton cannons to pick up the Lings, but the Ultras they can't pick up at all. Now, Nikki Boy does see that the, uh, that's what I'm looking for, the Phoenixes are out on the map, but there we go. He's just now throwing down his Spore Crawlers. Not too bad of an idea, but what this will give our Protoss a leg up on is map control. Because we won't have any Overlords able to actually accurately scout until, say, maybe Overlord Speed is done, which hasn't even begun yet. It's not even been researched. Even Metabolic Boost is still not finished yet to this stage in the game. Nothing wrong with that. But I prefer to get map control myself. Meanwhile, the Phoenixes are going to come over here and try and wreck as much house as possible. Yes, already getting quite a few overlords. 550 resources lost to our Zerg's game. That, 300 of that actually being um, the hatchery that we saw Nikki Boy put in his opponent's lane at the beginning of the game. And ouch, this is actually, this could be pretty bad for Nikki Boy if he doesn't just pull back his overlords. I mean, it's kind of a simple mechanic. I, I immediately go on the defensive once I see Phoenix is out on the map and I just try to turtle up. Uh, Worker is getting picked up one at a time. Nothing too terribly wrong with that. It's just, you know. Okay. So far, we actually see, I, you know. Paper, he's getting a good lead with what he's got, but of course the Hydras are already out. That means fun time's over for the Phoenixes. But of course, they're going to catch one or two Overlords over here if they simply open their eyes. They can see both, but ah, there we go. But now he's got to be ready to go on the defensive because he's going to be facing straight up Hydras now and some Roaches. There's actually going to be a few Hydras hitting the front lines before the Roaches. Back at home, we actually have an Immortal and quite a few zealots and sentries but of course once the groove spines kick in and that, that has finished then it could actually be quite lethal to the position that paper is in presently however nikki did just get out of a supply block he supply blocked again immediately afterwards and he's floating a little bit in the way of resources this is all in i want to say this is kind of like borderline all in this is going to be pressure, for sure. Not much we can just tell by looking at this. But of course, Paper behind this has a couple of gateways over here. He might be able to throw some Zealots at his opponent behind all this. Overlord just now spreading creep has been shot down, bringing the resources lost for our Zerg to about 1,200. Ideally, with Phoenixes, as a Protoss player, you need to be able to get... Oh! All of your Phoenixes alive! Whew. And maybe get two, three Queen kills at the very least, and as many Overlords as possible. Back there, I believe that the units we saw lost for uh, Nikki Boy was only one queen and quite a few overlords, but I, you know, it's gonna go. It's gonna pay off. I mean, we have the forward engagements coming, both players struggling for positioning, and Nikki Boy just decides, okay, I'm gonna back off. Get back off for now. But behind this, a zealot run by at the third. Upgrades. We have plus one attack for those zealots. No speed, to the best of my knowledge. No, no, not, none whatsoever. And they're just going to straight up target down this hatchery. 
But meanwhile, and oh man, this is actually pretty big. We actually have a bit of a surround coming down here. But the force fields are so beautiful. They're actually cutting Nikki Boy's forces off. The Hydras back here are actually not hitting anything in the front lines like what we have here from our Protoss. But now, just as, I say, just as I say that, all the force fields wear off. I think we actually had Paper's reflexes in the wrong location. He was not microing the right units. And it looks like the third will fall in exchange for his main army. I think that's damage well done. But at the same time, we're going to have to see Nikki try and take a double expo if he loses his hatch. It does fall. How many workers were killed with that? 19 altogether. So Paper actually doing, I want to say, an acceptable amount of damage. But overall, the only thing that he had left over since the beginning of the game are basically since... The only thing he has left over from his main army is these phoenixes. And there's a bunch of hydras and roaches streaming across the map. Now, oh no, mutas are actually joining the mix. Three phoenixes versus this many mutas. It's going to be hard to measure, really. But, of course, the more important thing is how many stalkers he's going to have. Because, of course, the ground army facing off against the ground army is more important. Phoenixes don't shoot down. They shoot up. And the mutas, I don't think he knows about those just yet. Now he, he should know. He just got vision of them just now. Phoenixes are going to fall one by one, unfortunately. And now it looks like both players sending their main armies at each other. No force fields left on any of those and with that we actually see paper leaving the game i want to say it was that one engagement right here that there was still a single force field left that would have done him some good on one of those sentries i think but behind this you know i mean nicky boy he just had his main army left over in the end while paper did not and paper he, he, he just really didn't do enough damage with his phoenixes initially ideally the most important units that you can kill with the with the excuse me the phoenixes would be the queens because that's what keeps the production high for Zerg. getting a few drones on gas yeah that helps a little bit but i you know overall it's it's something that can be replaced the phoenix opener i wouldn't say is short-lived i wouldn't say as flawed but you have to do damage with your phoenix opener if you kill nothing with your phoenix opener you're basically putting yourself behind so it was kind of a gamble Overall, very strong play from Nicky Boy. Uh, he responded to his third falling appropriately, of course, we can see with double hatches. <clears throat> Overall, his main army, he did... He, he, I, I want to say that basically the main reason why... Let's go back and look at that engagement. Let's go back and look. What was that? That was probably two minutes ago. Let's check 11 minutes. Checking the minimum up. Yeah, this is actually after his main army was killed, I think. Let me see. No, actually, this was before. Let's speed it up just a little bit. Okay. So. Here we go. This is actually what I was looking for. Let's see how many force fields there are left on these sentry before it falls. Ah. Okay, so actually almost all the force fields were burnt, but that one sentry right there, uh, I think unfortunately, if we just look at the way this actually shaped up, some of the force fields could have been put together to make a better wall, but of course they were just about to fall. Micro and the Colossi was not quite the best, unfortunately, and you know, they're doing their, he did his best, but just, I don't know. This was, I wouldn't say the most clutch engagement. But there was... I, it's hard to place for you. Paper got in, he did the damage that he could, and he got out. His opponent's income was about the same as his after he had taken down that hatch. Of course, he was already floating resources, getting ready for mutas. And this is the most important part. The finest example that I can think of is... Um, I remember Sen... Let's go ahead and pause this. I remember Sen at uh, the North American Star League qualifiers back in the Wings of Liberty days was playing versus a Protoss on Whirlwind LE. He had Immaculate Creep Spread. His opponent was going for Blink Stalkers. He didn't have speed on his Roaches. But even though his third had fallen, he was managing to push back his opponent's main army and keeping him from taking a third simply due to the fact that his own army supply was higher than that of his opponent's. So essentially, I think the damage that Paper did... did uh, he did in, in the early game simply wasn't enough with his phoenixes maybe i want to say minimum 1500 minerals lost but it could also have been that that proxy hatch that set him back just a teeny bit anyway if you guys liked what you saw here today just go ahead and click on the subscribe button this is breaker i'll see you guys next time